Today I have the novel Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. This is what I'm reading at present. This is a book that I come to, come back to every few years, every so often because of how exquisite the beauty of its language is. This is truly one of Austen's works where she is carving a miniature painting in ivory. So, during the Victorian era, the Regency age of Queen Victoria, the 1800s, it was a very prudish, priggish period. What does a young woman who is so well informed on politics, on religion, on the changes in rural life turning into a more urban life, she is so well informed, she is so well educated. But we need to remember that this is a period where a lady or a woman's opinions were not welcome. Especially those on politics, on uncomfortable truths were not welcome. And in such a period, what is a lady to do? What is such a, a young woman to do? She would write a novel and that is what Jane Austen did. In her Mansfield Park, the protagonist, the heroine is a is the journey of a little girl from the age of 10 to 18 and through her innocent inquisitive questions Austin makes us think of the dawn of change of the changes we see how aware our writer was about the changes that were slowly coming into Victorian society and the strength of morality is also presented here when the hero Edmund, when he asks Fanny, give me, spare me a moment of your time before you return to China. He is talking about her habit of extensive reading because he knows that the moment he quits the room, she is going to go back into her books. So this is at that period, I feel Austin was opening doors for young women of the period showing the importance of education and the mere exquisite beauty of each and every line places her with Milton and I would say even Shakespeare. When she asks questions or when she tells us that such and such properties, huge properties came up in certain parts of England after the owners were involved in trade in Jamaica or New England, we are made to think of the abolitionist views. And what better way to influence people to be abolitionists, to think that all people are equal? What better way than to tell it in a beautiful story? Without actually pointing out what is right and wrong. There is a play in this beautiful novel in which Austin asks the viewers to sit back and judge the play for themselves. And in the same way, I feel she is sitting back and telling us to judge the world for ourselves. Thank you.